So anything a person benefits from is called rizq. Benefit from in your livelihood and for a Muslim, also in your hereafter. Some people forget that rizq, provision and sustenance is also for your hereafter. Let me explain to you. In the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى The rizq, the provision, the sustenance, the gift which Allah gives you is far better and more everlasting. What's he talking about here? Every time rizq is mentioned in the Quran that Allah gives it to you, it generally means paradise, jannah. Jannah is better than anything that you can ever imagine. And it is everlasting. Which risk would you like? A temporary sustenance or an everlasting sustenance? Which one would you choose? Everlasting or temporary? Everlasting. Would you, pre would you prefer a sustenance that's everlasting and better than a temporary and less worthy one? Or would you prefer a temporary less worthy than an everlasting better one? Obviously, you, pres you, you want the latter. What's everlasting and better and far more greater worth. So for us, let's begin from here. A Muslim works backwards. The ultimate sustenance that we are after is the everlasting, ultimate, best sustenance, which the end is Jannah. Because we're all going to die. Now, well, who's worse? Somebody accumulates a lot and then has to leave it all behind and gets buried in that little tiny um, hole in the ground. Or a person who has much more to look for, forward to beyond their death. A person has more to look forward beyond their death. And that is our belief, alhamdulillah, as Muslims. This is just a testing life here. It's just a, a means. Money is a means. Rizq is a means. And there's some happiness. So here are the types of rizq that's mentioned in the Quran and in hadiths and uh, different types of statements from scholars. So rizq comes material and immaterial. The material is obviously money, things like money, gold, silver, food, clothing, farm, livestock, home, and so on. The immaterial rizq, sustenance and provision, and things that people, Allah gives people is, you know, things like intelligence, knowledge, connections, health, status, inherently good character, looks, family, even love. Love is rizq. You are granted that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can work on it. But the granting of it is from Allah. So brothers and sisters, rizq is far wider than the narrow mindset that most people think of when they say only money. I mean, what is money? Money is a, is, is a currency which we as human beings gave importance to. Otherwise, there's, no, there's nothing important about it. We made it important. Isn't that correct? So brothers and sisters, broaden your mindset and watch your provision and your sustenance and your happiness and your content also grow wider. So that you don't look at someone else and say, man, they drive a better car than mine. And then you start feeling that you've been betrayed. No, they may have a better car. You may have better skills. They may have more money. You may have better connections. They may have uh, a nicer house. You may have greater intelligence. Whatever it is, this is all part of rizq. And that is why Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, the way to contentment and to seeing everything in a good way is, one of the strategies is, try not to focus on those who've got more than you in a particular area. But rather look at those who have less than you in a particular area. And then he said, Because if you keep looking at people who've got more than you, you will, then, you will then fail to see the blessings which you already have, which they don't have. That is how we start becoming ungrateful to Allah by not recognizing what Allah has given us because we're focusing on one thing. Subhanallah. So brothers and sisters, we begin with that. So that's basically what rizq is. And where does rizq come from? Where does rizq come from? Who's the one? Look, sustenance has to come from somewhere. It either comes from yourself, or it can come from the universe. It can come from people. It can come from your parents. Or it can come from Allah. Who is the source 
of everything that is given to us. And Allah, Muslims believe it is Allah. He is the source of everything. Where, who provided your parents? Who provided your employer? Who provided the earth that is growing for you? Who brings the rain down from the clouds above and makes the crops grow for you? Who is the one who gives you water? Who is the one who gives you protection in this universe? A drought happens, who's the only one that can save you from it? We come together, we try, but at the end of the day, Allah is the one that provides the sustenance. He is the source. So we are first and foremost grateful to the source who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not grateful to him, then watch poverty come to you. And I don't mean poverty money only. Poverty, remember, we said rizq is a whole lot of things. You may have a lot of money, but you will be the most miserable person. You may have uh, a lot of money, but maybe your family is dysfunctional and disunited. Maybe you've lost sense of fulfillment and purpose in life. Who, who are you? Where are you going? Perhaps when death comes to you, you'll be the most miserable and most scared to die because there's nothing beyond this world. That's terrible, just to live this world and die in it, and that's it. So my brothers and sisters, moving on. I gathered 15 best types of rizq in life. If you have these or most of them, then you are the happiest person in the world. Number one, peace and tranquility of your soul. Ruh. Number two, purity of your heart. Number three, clarity of your mind. Number four, health of the body. Number five, mental health. Number six, caring and loving parents. Parents who make dua for you like your mother and your father who shows, shows you compassion. Rizq of happiness is number seven, siblings who love and care for you. Number eight, righteous and loving children, a progeny who smile to you. Number nine, a loving spouse, a loving husband or a loving wife. Number 10, an honest and genuine friend is good rizq in this life. Number 11, iman, your spiritual health. Number 12, knowledge and wisdom. Number 13, material wealth and money. And number 14, a, nat a natural respect and acceptance of people for you. Due to your good character, which Allah gives you, and your personality, you find that people lean towards you and accept you, and they like you. But on condition that you're the same in private and in public. That is a sign of good rizq. If you have this or part of it, then know that, alhamdulillah, you have a wealth of provision that Allah is looking after you with, my brothers and sisters. I want to give you a little case study, a little scenario, and ask you what you think with this question. Are you ready for it? I heard this from one of the scholars, a story about two brothers. One brother, we call him lazy. <laughs> He's got lazy dependence. In Arabic, it's called tawakul. Remember the word tawakul? which means to rely on Allah. This one, this kid, he's got tawakul, which literally means lazy dependence. Won't do anything and relies on others. His other brother is the opposite. He's proactive with tawakul and he relies on Allah. So they had a debate. The one who is proactive says to his brother, get off the couch, start working. You will not receive your sustenance, your rizq, unless you... Pursue it, you have to work for it. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. His other brother says to him, the lazy one, he says, no. Whatever Allah has written for me is going to come to me, even if I sit right here on my couch. So the brother who is, believes that you have to work for it goes out and he starts looking for sustenance. On his way, he sees a branch of a tree full of apples outside of someone's uh, farm or backyard onto the road. And you know, in Islam, if it's outside on the public road, whatever drops, you can take it. It's public property. So there were apples that had dropped and a little bit on the branch. He took them and put them into his basket and brought back about 50 or so apples back home. Looks at his brother and he goes, look, look at this sorry case of a brother of mine. Here, man, take an apple. His brother looks at him eating the apple and he goes, I told you, you cannot get apple without working. I had to go out seeking it and this is why I got the apples. His brother smiles at him and he goes, 
You're, you've, you're, you've lost the case. I sat here and the apple came to me. Now the question is, who's right and who's wrong? The brother who said, you have to work for your sustenance? Or the one who sat down, the sustenance came to him without, doing, without lifting a finger? Who's right? Who's wrong? And we just read here that Allah has written your rizq, isn't that correct? So if he's written your rizq, you are sure going to get it. And that is true. You will get your rizq and it will chase you and you will not die until you get it. Mark my words, that is a factual belief in the Quran. Every single one of you will not die until whatever has been written for you, you have received it. And once you've received it all, then you'll die. So he's kind of right. But at the same time, the other one is also right. Brother, both of them are right halfway. Let's combine the two. Let's combine the two and answer the question. You see, there are two types of rizq which Allah gives you. The rizq without effort and the rizq with effort. About 70% of the rizq which is with effort is a given. And about 20 or 30% could be rizq without effort. And even if you put the effort, the amount of risk that you're going to get is also variable. It all depends on Allah how much He wants to give you. But you know what the scholars said about both these brothers? They said they are both right, but there's only one difference. The one that went and worked for it, he gets the reward from Allah, while the other one who sat there gets nothing from Allah. He only gets the apple. Whereas the other one gets the apple, and the rewards of the hereafter. So he gets more apples in paradise. And that is the meaning of the verses in the Quran and the statements of the Prophet ﷺ, that the person who gives is better than the person who receives. The person who supports is better than the person who is dependent. Always. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that person who was sitting down an apple. How often do you think this will happen if he stays with that attitude, though? He's got a much smaller chance of having as much as his brother. Because Allah has also made the system of life to be that majority of your rizq will come through your working. Why? Because Allah wants you to act. He wants you to work. Because that's what He created for you for. He created you to do, to work, to move. And that's how He rewards you. That's the whole purpose of life. Reward you. Do the right thing. Help other people. If you just, everybody just sat there, what's the difference? What's the purpose of life anymore? So Allah has made your rizq dependent on number one. What He decides to give you, that will not change. And number two, partly also your seeking and your pursuit. As for the rest of it, yes, your rizq will still come to you, some of it by you sitting down. Example, if a person inherited a large amount of wealth, from their parents who passed away. You didn't do anything, they did everything, but you inherited it. You didn't lift a finger. That's a rizq from Allah. Alhamdulillah. A person can go fishing. You fish, 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 and you may come with fish, you may not come with fish. Isn't that right? That's also a rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can think about the tidal waves, you can think about the timing, you can think of, you know, get some information, you can use your resources, but at the end of the day, the quality, the, the outcome is to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.